So, the day has finally come and I have gotten my prototype cable, which is this right here. Um, it took a little bit of creative liberty just for the first one. There we go. And it's not quite the length I normally make mine. It's actually even shorter than one of the short ones I've made recently. But, uh, I think you said it's 15 inches. Okay, yeah, just just a little over 15 and a half. Of course, it help if I was in frame. So, it'll be a little short. Um, it won't be long enough for the R520, which I don't necessarily know if I care about. I do need it to be long enough, though, for the T640, if I ever get around to verifying that this will work in a T640. But, um, yeah, it turned out nice. Not 100% what I want. I need to uh, dial it in a little bit more. I foresee a few issues right now with this the way it is. This is a uh, non-adhesive, just single wall heat shrink. But because it's so close to the cables and how they come out of the connectors, it's going to make it hard to make the bends that are necessary, I think. Also, um, here we go. I was using this, uh, I'm guessing it's probably like nylon or some other sort of plastic braided mesh. And this is some sort of a fancier version of that. It has um, plastic and um, fiber strands, I guess. I think they're all fiber, but I'm not sure, I'm trying to think of the word right. Um, you can kind of tell it as plastic, but then this is more like a fabric, like your shirt. I doubt it's cotton, but, um, yeah, <laughs> I don't know how to explain that. And this is a, uh, twist on style instead of, uh, having to pull the wires through. So you can pull it apart and you can see the insides and it pulls together pretty tight on its own. So that is kind of nice, but, um, yeah. And, uh, there's the splice they did. I forgot to ask if that was an ultrasonic splice or if they had to solder that. But, um, you know, they got it staggered nice. And this splice is a lot shorter than the ones I'm doing because the ones I'm doing would probably be about eh, that long if we can get to focus. I'm doing about a half an inch, and this is probably more like a quarter of an inch. And three eighths of an inch. So I might be doing more like five eighths of an inch. Um, I'm not super keen on this uh, stuff that they have around it just because I think it's going to look really bad when it gets dusty and it's going to get dusty because it's, it's more of a uh, um, restriction of airflow than this stuff is. Not to say this stuff doesn't restrict airflow. But I guess the uh, next thing to do would be to plug it in, assuming color and everything matches, which it should. The uh, pins are wired correctly. There is one other thing I need to uh, take into consideration, which I didn't know about before. The way I was doing the wiring was kind of uh, just dumb luck. I uh, happened to pick a way that works. But um, I was getting some odd behavior, and it may have been a red herring. But I noticed, let's see, this way. So these uh, ones that are currently on top are the plus 12 volt. And this is uh, in continuity mode right now. Um, so not all these pins. Um, here's the grounds. Okay. I'm trying to think here. Yeah, it's the grounds. Okay, never mind, that don't matter. <laughs> I did notice though that the, uh, I guess being the ground pins, one of the ground pins is not um, shared with the other three in the in the row. But uh, for some stupid reason, I was thinking these were the plus 12 volt side. And I, probably because I had the card like this and I wasn't thinking about where the locking tab is. So, Anywho, 
Um, next step is to verify that the cable works. And he um, labeled it. We might change the labeling just to make it less less letters. Um, I think I'm, I'm kind of conflicted, but I think instead of riser, I'm going to say mobo. One letter less. It'll make the heat shrink a little bit smaller and cleaner looking. And instead of Tesla, I'm going to say GPU. Technically, you're not plugging into the motherboard. You're plugging into the riser, but he mentioned that it might work better to do that. So I kind of agree with him on that, and it simplifies things. But get this plugged in. Now, being that this is a little bit more flexible for heat shrink, yeah, that is definitely better. But I think uh, I need to have the wiring more exposed. I need to lock in the final dimensions. So this cable will work very nicely lengthwise for the R720 and 30. I have been making it a little longer than necessary for multiple models. And then just kind of an ease of use. But um, yeah, I'm going to have problems with this heat shrink. Once it warms up, it'll probably flex, but <laughs> yeah, I think 17 and a half may be overkill because that's uh, 15 and a half. So I might, I, I need to play with the length a little bit more. What I'm going to do is take some of the uh, scrap cables. Just a second. So I'm going to take some of these and I'm going to simulate a length just by probably Velcro tying these together like this. And then I'll do some fitment stuff and kind of play with it. I don't really know how much um, people are going to care about R520 compatibility since it does also require some modifications. Ones that are compatible with the R520, maybe I'll just do what I've been doing and make my own just on the side. Um, otherwise... I could make two different lengths. I don't know yet. I, if, if I um, make different sizes, I'm going to have to pay more since I believe the batch pricing is based on the quantity of a specific design. But uh, I should have probably powered this on this whole time while I was rambling. It didn't immediately explode, so that's good. I don't have my laptop handy, so I'm not going to be able to put a full load on it. I already am seeing a minor issue, though, with the heat shrink being as long as it is. And, um, kind of tell them to zoom in a little. That's, uh, not playing too nice. Would help if that wasn't out. Kind of thinking it, so. I don't know what I'm going to do quite for certain about that yet. I'll probably take some pictures and send it, show them to the guy that uh, is making them for me once I get a little bit closer. Um, so this kind of gives me more of an idea of what I'll be working with. But, other than this being angry-ish because of uh, the lack of a cover. Oh, darn it. <laughs> Recess. Where's my cover for that? must be this one. I'm not sure why it's all the way on the other side of the room. Also, I didn't realize I had the light on. There we go. <laughs> I don't think it mattered, but the uh, camera light was on. So this is going to take a second. Um, I'm just going to pause and I'll be back once it's done booting. Alright, well we're booted up now. And if it made it this far, Oops. Um, odds are the cable's fine, obviously. Because if it wasn't wired correctly, it would short the uh, power supply out. But, we will uh, launch a benchmark real quick. It doesn't pull as much as it could because um, the onboard graphics of this Rack 7910 
do not have support for more than, uh, I think it's 1280 by 1024 is what we're running it now. But it is a load of sorts. And uh, yeah, it is seeing the Tesla right now. So a little bit more. And we will go to the uh, sensor tab. I would probably have to remote into it if I want to uh, be able to push it a little harder. For whatever reason, that seems to be the easy solution. But um, I'm going to switch the board power to off and show max. And it's pulling 106 watts max in the peaks. So, cable's definitely working because I don't believe you can pull 100 plus watts from a uh, 75 watt PCI Express slot. I would assume the computer would protect itself and shut down at that point. But, uh, yeah, one step closer. And, um, really what it comes down to is getting the uh, design finalized. And I'm definitely going to have to do something different with the heat shrink. I'm not too happy with that. Um, the cable braiding it's not, it's not great, it's not ideal, but it's what they thought would work better with uh, the heat shrink to get it more uniform looking and have the letters, the letters still turn out nice, but it's definitely going to have to be further away and I think it's going to be better if the heat shrink itself is shorter. I might see if they have a 3 to 1 heat shrink that isn't glue based that um, will shrink nicely on there basically but yeah that's where things stand I'll shut this down um, I need to order the 4 plus 4 pins so I can uh, supply those to the person making the uh, cables for me and then from there it will be a waiting game. He said hopefully lead time would be within a month once I lock down a design. I suspect I'm going to need another week to properly figure this out. And since I am committing to a hundred of them, I'm probably, as much as I don't want to, going to have to pay for one more prototype because I don't want to pay for a final design <laughs> and then find out that I don't like it. But, um, yeah, I'm kind of conflicted about this. I think I'd rather have the heat shrink further back. That way it's easier for the user to flex the cables and in, when installing and you don't have to fight the resistance of the heat shrink. Otherwise, I mean, the printing turned out nice. Very readable. He got it so it's lined up with the locking tabs. Assuming you don't twist the wires too much. And uh, very flexible. The uh, insulation on these wires, I believe, is a little bit nicer than some of the stuff they use in the power supplies. I don't, it's not the same color, but yeah, it looks like yeah, this stuff's slight, slightly thicker insulation. But it's more... The, the cheap random power supplies is slightly thicker than this, but it's also more flexible feeling, especially as a bundle. Um, and one of the viewers mentioned that they would rather have a version that didn't have this, and that was basically to the absolute, like, shortest length possible to use this. And I don't know what I'm going to do about that yet, because that would require me to run another batch, and... Um, it's just kind of something to think about. I get what they're saying. I've, I agree with their, their points. I just want to make a design for something that's more universal personally. Also, it won't look like this. Um, when he was making this, he said he accidentally screwed up and he didn't have it lined up the right way because um, one side goes over the other. Well, on this end or that end, whichever end he started with, he uh, accidentally put the wrong side over the other, but um, that's why it's a prototype.
And honestly, if I cared enough, I could just cut this heat shrink off and redo it. But I don't plan on selling at least my first prototype. <laughs> um, I do plan, let's see here. Oh, it's kind of silly, but um, not that. I think uh, I may end up saving the production runs and uh, framing them or something because I got this is the one that started it all. Um, I did a very sketchy job of pulling one of the pins and uh, yeah, it was pretty bad. I'm surprised this is wired correctly even to be honest. But uh, yeah, this was the first one I made to use with the K80 and uh, it's extremely sketchy. And this isn't one of the um, second or whatever ones, but it's a later prototype. And uh, this one I screwed up on and I put the uh, double wide tabs on the wrong end. So I had to wheel it down and uh, yeah, it became my, my cable. Also, this one is not compatible with R730 because it doesn't have... What? Uh, I just didn't, I, I'm being dumb. I didn't, um, the wires aren't color coded correctly because I um, did it in the splice. <laughs> but this one's not compatible with the R730 because it doesn't have the jumper that is uh, necessary to work properly. But yeah, no, once all is said is done, I think I'm gonna frame these with the uh, picture. The, the famous picture that's actually been making its rounds, although not with this much marking. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, be my, my first product. I have another idea for a product, but now that I'm doing more research, I might not do it. So that's kind of a bummer, but it's, uh, oh, well. But, uh, yeah, that's the update on this. And um, hopefully it's interesting, and thanks for watching.